Welcome to Conservation Halton Parks. I'm Craig Mackin, Director of Parks and Operations. And I'm Brenna Bartley, Education Manager. We're super excited to take you on a tour of our eight parks today. All eight of our parks are located within Halton Region. We see about 1.3 million people annually enjoying our parks. We're going to take you on a tour, so let's go. Hilton Falls is probably one of the best places to go for a hike. You get to experience a whole bunch of different water bodies and different types of environment, different types of forest covers. It really is a really unique spot and it's very popular for the birding community. In the winter time when we've got some skiing and snowshoeing going on, it's a great time to feed the chickadees right from your hand. Another popular thing that as you can see behind me is the reservoir here which is very popular for fishing. We also tie into the region of Halton's forest system as well. So there's also a large trails back in there that is very popular for mountain biking. We do have a waterfall here. The name of Hilton Falls comes after Edward Hilton who opened a mill back in 1835. And the falls is what used to power that mill. It makes it really unique and uh, definitely the most popular thing at Hilton Falls. You can see behind me some of the fall colors have already started to change. Fall is the busiest time to come to any one of our parks. Welcome to Robert Edmondson Conservation Area. It's one of Conservation Halton's smallest conservation areas, but what it lacks in size, it really makes up for in peace and quiet. So the small reservoir that you can see behind me is very popular with folks who want to bring out youngsters to learn how to fish. Uh, it's also a wonderful place to lay down a blanket and have a picnic on a sunny summer's day. You can even go down along the edge of the water and take a look for frogs and turtles. One of the biggest attractions to Robert Edmondson is the 400 meter boardwalk, which runs through a wetland. And if you come out during May, bloom time for marsh marigolds is just a revelation. Uh, a sea of yellow blooms can be seen and are greatly enjoyed by hikers and photographers alike. Rattlesnake Point is one of the best places in southwestern Ontario for the view. The viewpoints that we've got here in the park are fantastic, and especially at this time of year with the, with the fall and the changing colors. So this park was opened in 1962. As legend has it, sailors, uh, when they came into port in, into Hamilton, would, would come up here for the day or, or, or for a night and they would see rattlesnakes sunning themselves on the rocky outcrops. Uh, so that's how uh, one legend has it that we got our name of Rattlesnake Point. The other story is that from the sky, the escarpment looks like it's snaking along through here. So uh, we also get the, the Rattlesnake Point reference from, from that point as well. We've got about nine kilometers of hiking trail. There's also over 200 rock climbing routes. We're one of the few places in southwestern Ontario where you can do rock climbing. So it's very popular in the climbing community. We've also got a lot of picnic sites, a few campsites, and we're linked into Crawford Lake Conservation Area too. So you can actually hike right from Rattlesnake over to Crawford Lake. If you've got a camera and, and, and you love to take pictures, if you like to see the turkey vultures soar, uh, the viewpoints are really what makes Rattlesnake Point special. Mouseburg is um, a fairly accessible property. We've got really family-friendly trails, stroller-friendly trails. We have uh, a wide variety of uh, terrain and habitats to explore in the park to our reservoir that you can boat or fish on. Um, and then we have a lot of features that draw people in to visit us. We have our raptor center uh, with birds like my friend Shadow. We have our farmyard and our barn with our Pershawn horses, sheep, goats, donkeys. Um, we really like to talk to people about some of the birds that they can find locally in this area um, and some of the effects that we can have on the birds, both positive and negative. Um, our birds that we have living here come to us in a variety of different ways. Basically, they're either birds that started their life in the wild, ended up injured, couldn't be rehabilitated and returned back to the wild, or they're birds like my friend Shadow here who were born in captivity and raised specifically for the job of education. 
So we run a number of programs here at Mount Spurg on a seasonal basis. Uh, so right now we are offering our spectacular Halloween event, which is a family friendly, um, slightly spooky evening event. Um, after spectacular, we'll be moving into our oh so popular Christmas Town program and maybe even meeting a special someone in a, a nice big red suit um, and getting a really great experience with your family that way. Um, and then Winterlit uh, is a, another really great evening program that you can come out, go for a stroll, we light up the woods and make it really magical. Um, and then one of our best known and biggest uh, seasonal festivals is our Maple Syrup Festival. Uh, so you can come out and learn how we tap the trees, turn sap into maple syrup, um, and hopefully if all goes as planned, enjoy it on some delicious pancakes made here at the park as well. So we have a really um, interesting historical connection here at Mountsburg, and you can see signs of the history when you come and visit the park. This property was originally settled by the Cameron family uh, back in the late 1800s. Um, and as you walk around, you'll see evidence of um, that settlement of the property from our old stone house that we have, some old apple trees that they would have planted. And then in Mapletown, we're actually using the sugar bush that the Cameron family would have used all those years ago. Crawford Lake's one of our most unique areas. At Crawford Lake, history and the environment come together. People who visit the park often come to take a walk on our elevated boardwalk that goes all the way around a rare Merrimick Lake. And the lake is really unique. It's almost a unicorn lake. It's shaped like an ice cream cone, very deep compared to its surface area. And what that means is there's almost two lakes in the basin. And the lake that's at the bottom preserves history in its depths. And scientists from around the world come to study what you can find in the bottom of Crawford Lake. Researchers in 1971 discovered corn pollen in a layer of the lake from about the 1450s, and that evidence helped us find an archaeological site for a longhouse village of 11 longhouses that existed here over 600 years ago. And from the 1980s until present, we've been reconstructing that village on its original site. So visitors who come to the area can actually learn all about the indigenous history of the land, they can also learn about the environmental history of the land, and they can just enjoy a beautiful walk through the escarpment woodlands. Another attraction that people enjoy at Crawford Lake, you can see behind me, is these beautiful chainsaw sculptures. We call this trail the Hide and Seek Trail. It actually takes you down to Crawford Lake and back up. There are 10 chainsaw sculptures that people can come and enjoy, and they're a representation of species at risk in our area. So a way for you to interact with the trail, interact with art, but also help people understand the importance of preserving these green spaces for future generations. Welcome to Mount Nemo Conservation Area. Mount Nemo is very popular for hiking. It's very close to the city of Burlington, so it's a great place to take your dog after work. Uh, there's also about 200 climbing routes here too, so it's very popular with the climbing community. Probably one of the best parts of Mount Nemo is the view. And right now we're standing at Brock Harris Lookout at Mount Nemo Conservation Area, and it is spectacular views of the skyline of the city of Toronto, and on clear days you can even see the CN Tower. Welcome to Kelso Glen Eden, two parks operating as one. Um, at this location, we've got a ski area with 65 years of history now, uh, and a four season park operation in Kelso uh, that delivers all sorts of trail attractions and recreational attractions year round. Kelso as a park offers everything from picnic sites and campgrounds to a challenge course, which you see behind me, a lifeguarded beach, a trail network with only over 30 kilometers of trails, uh, with a little bit of everything for people to enjoy. Beginner stuff for people that are new to biking and hiking, right up to some gnarly terrain that our most avid expert bikers uh, and hikers find to be a challenge. 
Glen Eden is uh, typically one of Ontario's top three in terms of busiest locations each year. One of the province's busiest snow school locations or destinations. We cater to families, we cater to beginners, intermediates. We do have a, an advanced and expert ski and snowboard crowd, but we are definitely known as a learning centre. So in the winter, uh, you're skiing off of the escarpment, and so there's a lot of the iconic views of the escarpment in the background. And in the summer season, when you're enjoying Kelso, we have trails that work the way along that escarpment face. And then when you're on our challenge course and our beach, you've got some of those amazing uh, lookouts and vistas, vantage points that appear in the backdrop of your visit here to the park. Welcome to our newest conservation area, Area 8, formerly known as Kelso Quarry. A lot of the stone that came out of this quarry was what helped build the 401. A million tons of aggregate were removed from this site per year during its operation. Over 30 years of restoration work has gone into turning this into the space that it is today. It literally was, at one time, just limestone basin. And now you can see behind me, it's a thriving ecosystem. And that was done in partnership with Barrett Gold, Conservation Halton, bringing this space back to life. So what we're hoping to have for people here at Area 8 is a place for people to picnic, relax by the water, enjoy birding, fishing, boating, um, and just generally reconnect with nature. Thank you very much for coming on the tour with us today. We hope to see you in one of our beautiful parks someday soon. Thank you.